We'll start by taking a look at some of the beneficial insects in our landscape. When we think of beneficial insects, we probably first think of the honeybee. Honeybees pollinate a number of our plants, uh, from flowers to nuts and fruits and vegetables. And they're a very important part of the garden ecosystem. Without pollinators, we wouldn't have many of the fruits that we enjoy, and our flowers wouldn't produce seed. When we think of pollinators, we mainly think of honeybees, but there are also a number of other insects that pollinate uh, flowers as well as our vegetables, such as butterflies and moths, as well as some flies, uh, beetles, and a whole host of other insects. Insects perform a number of services in the landscape. We could think of them as having different jobs. We already looked at the pollinators, which is one job. There are other insects that decompose uh, plant litter, uh, decaying organisms, uh, all sorts of what would be otherwise waste. And when they decompose this material, they turn it into uh, organic matter that we can use in the garden, uh, mainly compost. And so we really benefit a great deal from having decomposers working in the landscape uh, and giving this nice, rich material to garden with. Another role that insects play in the landscape is one of predation. And this is a group of insects that I want to focus on mainly today. Predators are our allies in the war against those pesky insects that feed on all of our plants. And it's important to learn who these allies are so that we can help protect them in the, in the landscape. Some of these go unnoticed. Some are so tiny that we don't even see them. Um, this is especially true of a tiny wasp called a parasitoid. Others are active at night, and so we really don't see them out in the garden when we're out in the gardens during the day. So let's take a look at some of our insect allies. Uh, which we would call natural enemies that help us fight those difficult insects. A great many beetles are also predators, such as this lady beetle. Also ground beetles, uh, lightning bugs, soldier beetles, tiger beetles. Many of these, like the ground beetles, are active at night and hide underneath uh, ground cover during the day. Beetles are the most numerous uh, species of all the insect um, groups. In fact, there's more beetles than anything else in any other species. And this was a lightning beetle. They're also predaceous. Uh, our kids like to catch them, but they're also very active in the garden. Uh, spiders are wonderful predators. Of course, they're not insects, um, but many of them will actively hunt through your plants looking for insects. Uh, like the jumping spiders. Uh, and there's others that sit and wait, like this guy and some crab spiders. And they'll wait for prey to pass by and grab it and snatch it up. Centipedes are not insects, but they are predators and feed on a, a variety of insects in the garden. They're also active at night, so we don't tend to see them too much when we're walking around. But if you flip over a rock, you're sure to find one. On this plant, we see a pentatomid. This is a stink bug. Uh, it's a true bug. A lot of people call insects bugs, but there's a group of insects that really are called bugs. Uh, pentatomids, we find green ones and brown ones, and some of them are predaceous and others feed on plants. And it's a little difficult to tell which is which unless you actually see them uh, feeding from the plant. But a general, general rule of thumb is that the green ones feed on plants and the brown ones feed on insects, although this doesn't always hold true. Another insect I found on this plant, though it happens to be dead, is this parasitoid wasp. And a parasitoid is a specialized kind of predator. It'll lay its eggs either inside or on top of another insect. And then when the eggs hatch, the larvae feed on that insect. And as I said, this is a fairly large parasitoid. Some are so small that you could fit several on the period at the end of a sentence. Ants forage on a wide range of material from uh, plants, they decompose, but many ants are also predaceous. And this is another one of those uh, insects where if they're in the wrong place, we consider them a pest, but if they're where they're, if their uh, nest is where they're not bothering anybody, 
it's a good idea to leave them in place and let them go ahead and uh, do what they're going to do. They, they will help a lot with feeding on insects in the garden. And sometimes we're surprised at what we find ants feeding on. One time I saw an ant in a yellow jacket fighting over a little caterpillar larvae. So they really uh, do feed on surprisingly large prey items. All sorts of wasps, like this paper wasp, mud wasps, yellow jackets, they're all predaceous. And they feed on a great many different insects in the garden, from caterpillars, uh, all, so all sorts of insects. Now, sometimes when the nests are in a location such as this, this one's in our playhouse, uh, we'll probably want to remove that. But when the wasps' nests are in places where they're not bothering people, it's a good idea to leave them in place and let them go about their business. Well, these are just a few of the many predators that we find in our landscape. Of course, there's many more lacewings, praying mantids, even some flies are predaceous. Uh, but even when you know what you're looking for, they can often be hard to locate. There's several things that you could do to protect the beneficial insects that are already present in your landscape. And one of those is to really take care when using pesticides and limit your pesticide use. If at all possible, use alternative forms of pest control. You can do things like pruning out sections of a plant if there's aphids on it. You can just prune that material out and destroy it. You can hand remove larger insects like the asparagus beetles that we looked at previously. And you can also encourage natural enemies to come. And we'll look at ways to encourage and attract natural enemies to the landscape. If you are going to use pesticides, choose a pesticide that has a narrow um, activity against a few pests rather than a broad spectrum. You want to use very specific chemicals. That way it'll target o only the pest or a few other closely related insects and uh, leave the natural enemies. Now if you're going to spray, uh, say this rose had aphids on it and you wanted to spray it but the other roses around here didn't have aphids, there's no need to treat all of the roses. You only need to treat the plant that is infested. You can also um, make sure that you follow the label rates. Don't over apply pesticides uh, and that way you won't be um, adding extra chemical that doesn't need to be in the environment. Now let's take a look at a few ways that we can attract natural enemies to our landscape. There are a number of things we can do to invite natural enemies into the landscape. Like any organism, these insects need food, water, and shelter. They need shelter to protect them from the wind, from hot temperatures, and for night active insects, they need a place to hide during the day. Organic mulches, such as wood chips, are a really good uh, way to provide some shelter. A lot of our beetles will just hide out right underneath the mulch. Straw also works really well. It's a good idea to leave your bales out for a while and let any seeds germinate before you lay them out, uh, which will reduce problems with weeds. Straw works really well in a vegetable garden where you don't want it to look quite as decorative uh, as in other areas. Rocks also make really good shelter. Um, you'll find a number of insects and their relatives hiding underneath rocks uh, during the day. Now, insects also need water. And you don't have to have a, a huge water source like this. Um, just a small pool like you might put in a butterfly garden is sufficient to provide water for our natural enemies. And water actually will attract a whole other group of natural enemies, uh, such as dragonflies and damselflies, as well as water striders, which you find uh, jumping along on the surface of the water. In addition to water and shelter, we can provide uh, food sources to attract natural enemies. Now the natural enemies of course feed on insects, but they also use pollen and nectar to supplement their diet. And there's a great many plants that we can use to attract natural enemies to the garden. Uh, many of our asters, such as the coreopsis, daisy, our state flower, wildflower, the gallardia, as well as yarrow, are very attractive to natural enemies. There's also a number of flowering herbs that attract natural enemies, including dill, fennel, coriander, and caraway. Many of our brassica plants, our mustards, as well as our legumes like clover, are also useful for bringing in natural enemies, as is um, milkweed and even potentilla. 
Including as many flowering plants in the landscape as you can will help you to bring in natural enemies. Now, we have many ways that we can invite natural enemies into the landscape, but the best thing that we could do to protect them once they're there is to know who they are. There's a great many resources that you can use, uh, books from the library. The book by our author, Eric Grizel, has a number of really fabulous pictures of these natural enemies. And once you get to know them, who they are, you can do more to protect them and conserve them in the landscape.